What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Hey Louise sports podcast. Will with the finger pointing. Yeah. This is episode 246, or as I joked earlier, 246. Hey. How you doing? How are you doing? Um and then we did a we did a rendition of Call Me Maybe where it was Fuck Me Maybe. Uh, oh yeah, we we don't need to go into this, Josh. You know what? I, it was funny. Who cares? <laughs> For the week of July thirty first, twenty twenty two, the title of this episode is the Super Team. Get it? Super. Get it because the HCS North American Super Tournament is this mm. weekend, and then we potentially have a quote unquote super roster that was formed over the. Last week, get it? Do you get it? Yeah, yes, I All think right, they good. do. I think they do. If they didn't, they do now. Let's see if you get this. Why does our solar system get such bad ratings? What? Why does our solar system get such bad ratings? Yes, we're opening up with a joke to start the show off because why the fuck not? I I don't know why, Josh. Because it only has one star. Great. The sun. W- wonderful. Thank you for that. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Uh, my name is Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. This week I'm joined by the man without a hat. Will, a.k.a. I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, the only reason why I said that is because you called it out earlier. How are you doing on this Monday evening? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I forgot a hat that I normally wear. I'm in my undershirt from work. Uh, I bought I brought a sweatshirt, but it's like almost 90 degrees outside. I'm not yeah. wearing that. Yeah, it's a little toasty outside. Uh, yeah, while we are inside, we do have a, a PC that is like a giant heater in this room. It's a true statement, too. And I would be sweating balls by the end of it. So we're just not doing that. Plain white tea, no hat. Basic today. Speaking about uh, plain white tea, the band, the plain white teas, uh, we a song of theirs was playing when we were shopping at Cub this weekend. Like, do they have new stuff? or like No, no. Stuff? Come on. I don't know what they're doing. I don't follow. It, it's their old shit. Gotcha. Okay. It's what everybody knows. Um, so yeah. And then the, I was humming it. Natana was singing it and dancing with Linnea and it was cute. And uh, yeah, there you go. Plain white tees, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why the fuck. I mean, you said plain white tees. That's what jump started it for me, but there you go. Yeah. That's what I have. But yeah, anyway, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm doing all right as well. Grilled some chicken up. You ate some of it. It was good. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, that's that's where I'm at. Oh shit! Justin did not make the drive down. D- are we sure? Are we sure about that? He could be right outside the no, door yeah, right maybe. now. Maybe unless he got made an eight hour trip in uh, thirty five minutes. I guess so. Oh, well, I guess we're gonna postpone for just a second because it's Natana at the door. So give me fucking one second. This is a really weird start. Will <clears> talk <throat> to the people. Okay. Will, you know what? You know, I'm gonna let you take this over. Let the people know what's coming yes. up on this week's episode of the show. Stats. In limited capacity, have finally been added to Waypoint. We'll get into that a little bit later. Halo Infinite, yet again, has an annoying issue right before a tournament. Tournaments are announced for the week, as always. We'll go run through those. Roster Mania has officially hit its peak. If you haven't been following Twitter, you can get all the information right here. And I might mess up some gamer tags, like I just messed up saying that line. <laughs> Tournaments are recapped. Our first topic of the rivalry between Spartan and Ryan Noob. Yeah, that's fucking... Pfft, yep. A second topic of the updated phase roster. Our final topic of our HCS and a super preview. And we'll obviously be ending the show with some more video games. And before we get into actually the start of the show, something I forgot to say is welcome everybody who's turning in live to the show. Shio, welcome. Justin, welcome. Um, Remedy Boots, good to see you again. Uncle Pumpy, great name as always. Thank you for joining us. And Voodoo Man, the reason why I said your name last is because it is Martin Holmes' birthday today. Happy birthday, Martin. Uh, of course, we have that in the shout outs of the show as well. But happy birthday to you, sir. Um, I hope it's a great one. And you deserve so much more in this world for the amount of shit that you've been 
having to deal with uh, within the fucking competitive Halo scene. But happy birthday to you. I love seeing the pictures on the Twitters about your various trips and excursions and everything that's happening over in your life. So I hope you're having a great one and uh, happy, happy birthday. Again. Um, Will, without further ado, let's get into some competitive news. Calgary Halo is looking for assistance. This is by Calgary Halo. Calgary. I knew the third time I fucking say this, it's going to be terrible. Calgary Halo is currently looking for people to help grow the community and run events, etc. If you are from the West Coast and are interested in building a grassroots community with me, as in Frag Out, please reach out and let's chat about what we can do together. So please do so. Um, Voodoo says he's renovating. He'll get a break soon. Oh, yeah, you moved recently. That's right. Well, I hope the move went well. Um, so as Will talked about as what's coming up on this week's episode of the show, stats are now on waypoint. Kinda. <laughs> so this is my halo support. Oh my God. Uh, new service record features are now available on halo waypoint. Yes, this is a fucking true thing at first. So before I even read the rest of the tweet, um, halo dot API shout out them, uh, tweeted out the, like the picture on waypoint. And I thought it was a joke. Like I legitimately at first thought it was a joke. So I logged into my account on waypoint. I'm like, Oh shit, this is actually real. Like it's a real thing. And then after that halo support tweeted out, uh, but like I said, they're on waypoint kinda. So new service record features are now available on halo waypoint. You can sign in at your waypoint account or download the app to see various lifetime stats, a graph showing your performance over the last 20 matches, your medals collection. And that's it. Um, it, the, the shitty part about this is like, oh, last 20 matches. Okay. Match history. No, it's not at all. It's literally just your performance. You don't see who you played against. You don't see anything really in terms of those oh. 20 games. Um, and some of the stuff is bugged. So there's that. But hey, progress. You know, <sighs> progress. And another downer situation for this video game that we love to love and love to hate at some points in time. Halo support is on the case. And yes, that's kind of like a play it like Paw Patrol, you know, like Chase is on the case. People with kids will know what I'm talking about. I know I'm old. Leave me alone. This is my Halo support. The Halo Infinite team is investigating reports of packet loss and fluctuating ping in matchmaking. Because it's fucking terrible. You can help our team investigate by enabling the network statistics option found in the UI tab of the settings menu and submitting a video with a ticket. And then Lucid put out a tweet um, that led to this tweet being published by Halo support. And he, and he said, we have the largest online tournament in a week, and this has been happening for weeks to multiple people all the time. Can we please have some sort of answer about what is happening? And if you look at the clip that's included, exclamation point show notes in chat or in the description, um, check out the show notes. It, uh, like you see his ping. And this is a scrim. Okay. This isn't an online match made game. Okay. This is a custom lobby. All right. So yes, it's still using a, a server, but like it's just, it's a custom lobby. Was it from the phase scrim? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, his ping was fluctuating between like 30 to 110 to 30 to 150 to 30 to 100. And this would be like immediate switches and uh, it was fucking bad. So, yeah, it's the supers in a week. So we're having fun over here. <sighs> hey, good, good thing it's the uh, Texas Fiber Extravaganza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out G1 for putting out one of the best tweets in a while. Um, Martin says, you'll enjoy next month's excursions. A random late night Discord call turned into a trip. That's amazing, man. God. If only us, you know. That's it for your competitive news. I just have a couple downer situations to end on there. So hopefully things will be uh, fixed soon. Your upcoming tournaments of the week presented by noobcombo.com. Check out noobcombo.com for all your 
Hey, Luis Sports Needs. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to read from noobcombo.com because uh, some have been added since I made the show notes this morning. Um, therefore, let's just go through them. Uh, daily tournaments, Z League daily tournaments, and First Blood daily tournaments, they're still happening. And then also on August 1st, that's today, we have the Esports Arena Series E and the HCS FFA Series for North America and Mexico. On Wednesday, August 3rd, Wild Wild West Wednesdays, 2v2s. Friday, August 5th through Sunday, August 7th, we have the HCS North American Thuber Tournament. And then on Sunday, wait, no, what the fuck am I talking about? Um, You know what? Oh, yeah, obviously. On Saturday, August 6th, I almost lost track of my days for some reason. We have the Europa Halo Summer Series Finals is taking place. Uh, the Halo 3 Squad Battle Draft Tournament and the Headshot po- uh, Headshot Posse. Is that is that Posse? P-O-S-S-E, is that Posse? Sure. Yeah. Cortana Cup Oddball 2v2. That's going to be something. And then on Sunday, August 7th, we have the uh, IG Galaxy 1v1s. There's two of them taking place apparently, so there you fucking go. That's it for upcoming turns for the week. Tournaments of the week. Can I fucking speak today? We're both having issues. <laughs> Presented by Ooh. noobcombo.com. Check out noobcombo.com for all your Halo esports needs. And maybe, just maybe, you'll buy some of his merch too. Who knows? I know he'd appreciate it if you do. He's got that sick ass like metal graphic tee, you know? Yeah. That looks pretty rad. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's how neat is that? Um well, you know, I'm fucking I don't know. I Yep. Yeah. 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 What do we got next? I don't even know anymore, man. Rustermania <laughs> You know, 246 episodes into this shit. You think I'd be like on top of it. But today's <laughs> just not that day, apparently. It's not it today, I guess. Um, roster mania for you. Here we go. Ascend. Lubiku? Yeah. Lubiku joins so. as a Halo analyst. Your G1 squad is now officially Predevinator, Squally, Swish, and Boo Boo Take My Doo Boo. So, yes, it is confirmed that Boo Boo Doo Boo uh, has been released from FaZe. We already knew that. He, yep. was, a, he was a free agent. and uh, But, yeah, now it's confirmed that G1 picked him up. And it made sense considering um, the owner, like, tweeted out that they signed a high-profile player. And I'm yes. like, that has to be right. Boo Boo. So, makes sense. Um, e United. E United. Um, now includes Rain. Ryan Noob, Manny, and Suspector. So their official squad is there. Yep. So Manny came from KCP. Yep. Um, and that was a one to one trade basically between Manny and King Nick. So King Nick went over to KCP. Manny came over to United. Um, and then Suspector, previously of Xset, um, and Xset dissolved their Halo roster because they left Halo, which means Suspector was uh, able to find another home. And I will say that this is a great, great pickup for United. Um, not a lot of people talk about Suspector. Uh, he is a very, maybe underrated's the wrong word to use because he's, in my mind, I don't think he's underrated. It's just because he's not talked about enough. You know what I mean? Undiscovered? Not even that. That's not, not the right that. word either. Yeah undervalued you know what that's what i'd say i'd say undervalued undervalued okay. yes okay because he is a he's a phenomenal phenomenal player and i'm like i'm really excited to see what he does in this more of a structured environment with an e united sure um uh, ryan noob has his kind of process you know i don't know if he, he kind of, it seems like he's the lead team leader. He has yeah. his idea on how the games should be played. And we'll see if these players fit nicely into his scheme. Yes. And 
during, I think I have this later on as well, but I'll bring it up here too, because since he's part of that roster, um, also crunchy dad, great name still welcome back. Um, in the Kansas city, uh, video that the United team put out, uh, where they talk about their performance and so on and so forth at HCS Kansas city major, uh, Ryan Ubin Spartan. I mean, obviously all the players got time on camera to talk like behind the scenes about how they, how they felt things went during the event and whatnot. And the videos included in the community creations, go check it out. But kind of the dynamic between Ryan Ubin Spartan in that video was that Ryan Ube, like you said, is definitely, definitely feels to be the IGL of the team. Also feels as though they have a very set way on how they do things. And they don't really like to deviate from that thing. Um, so like in terms of uh, traditional sport, like football, right? Like American football, where you'll you'll have your coach say a play to your quarterback. The quarterback goes to the line of scrimmage, talks to his team, and be like, this is the play we're doing, right? And for E United, it, it appears as though that has to be the play that's run. And if it gets broken up, then things might break down. From from me, so I've been watching after this switch up and different teams forming. I've been trying to tune into Ryan Noob a little bit more often. Yeah, and I don't think it's necessarily that the play has to be run exactly. It's not like, and for the record, this is from the context of that video, like oh, from, sure. from what I got, like from Casey. Okay, so, so maybe, maybe they've changed, but this is that's just my opinion from that. It's just there's because Ryan does a great job adapting and analyzing each situation he's in um like there was a weird thing where like in us was it a scrim or eights it all blurs together also watching a lot of halo um but they were playing live fire slayer they were down like 45 to 48 mm -hmm. and all ryan, ryan was like all four of us go sneaky to overshield and they picked off a player coming from a trying to get positioning then they backed up and like, this is obviously a situation like they were down, their plays weren't working right. and they just huddled and they moved together and got those picks and it all, they ended up winning 49 50. That's like, awesome. It was just that it's the adaptability. I think Ryan likes to play it more safe than aggressive. And he's like, that was just the exact call. It's like, let's all group up, pick off their aggressive players and then make our push. Right. And that was the dynamic between the Ryan Ube and Spartan in that video was that Spartan uh, was talking about how it, it felt this is paraphrasing. Of course, it, it talked about how um, it felt like they weren't able to deviate from what the original plan was. They weren't mm -hmm. able to play more aggressive when they needed to. Um, so yeah, like I said, hopefully that hopefully things, uh, obviously work out better for the team. But the thing yeah. that I, uh, the reason why I was talking about Suspector in this case is because I love, I'm glad Suspector is on this roster, um, potentially in a more stable, like the, we're, we're talking about E United where they were, I mean, for all intents and purposes, because another major hasn't happened since KC, they're still a top four team. Like, yes, half of the roster has changed. Let's be real about this. But they yeah. are still technically a top four team because no one's misplaced, like, displaced them since. Um, And I think the core of that team was Rain and Ryan. And they have a, they seem like very chill individuals. They seem like they have game plans in place. And I think Suspector can benefit from that. Um, because X set, when, it, when you watch X set play, it definitely felt like things were maybe too aggressive that they weren't able to slow things down when they needed to. Things got a little bit away from them. Yeah. Not as structured. And that's not against the players. It's like just an observation. Right. And with the United things are very structured. So maybe this could work out for in suspectors in suspectors favor. And also the same could be said for Manny. Yeah. Because if you think about it, when you look at KCP, they are known to be an aggressive team. Like that is, that's what everyone says. The analysts, the casters, whatever it may be. Everyone talks about how KCP is an aggressive team. Now, granted, uh, what we did see in some flashes of brilliance, I'd say at Kansas city was that they did have opportunities where they did slow things down. But 
I think, again, maybe this could be a learning opportunity for Manny as well, but maybe this is a little bit more of a structured environment, see how this plays out for their play style. And this could also assist Rain and Ryanub with a little bit more of an aggressive play style from a Manny, from a suspector. You know, you have that kind of best of both worlds scenario. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what this roster is able to do. We're going to, in our first topic of the show later, we'll talk about how maybe um, the, the, we'll talk about the whole Spartan Ryan bullshit later. But if I'm just going to take this roster at face value, I am genuinely excited to see what they can do because it feels like you have two very structured players in Rain and Ryan who have been teaming together for a very long time, who have been playing Halo, older Halos for a very long time. And then you have Manny and Suspector, um, two probably a little more aggressive players coming from more aggressive teams and bringing their play style to these, to this duo. And hopefully things don't clash and hopefully they're able to take advice from both sides and incorporate it into making something masterful. Yeah. Go ahead. Will. all right. Next team is phase. Uh, if you didn't know it is now Spartan renegade sniped down and falcated. So yeah, this is pretty stacked. So yeah, this was like the, the best worst kept secret. Yes. Um, because while people like were out there fantasizing about this, it really, it, it, it only made sense. Uh, the only one up in the air for me was Spartan and whether or not United would let go of him. Yeah. If phase would actually buy him out yes. or whatever it may be, whatever he was set at. Yep. Same with, I was kind of worried about renegade because uh, the reports were sentinels. Well, Sentinels were going to go for him, yeah. but then his buyout was so high yeah. that I was like, well, I, I was doubting that any team would pony up that money. Well, if any team would be able to, it would be FaZe. They got, they got some dough. They do. They do got some dough dough. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is the title. Of the, this is the reason for the title of the episode. The, the super team, if you will. Um, but we're going to have some things to talk about with FaZe in our second topic of the show. Because uh, they have a couple scrims under their belts. They have a tournament under their belt, regardless of the size. Um, I think it deserves to be talked about, but not in a crazy capacity. Like, this is the end-all be-all for the fucking team like people are thinking it is. Um, but no, we'll, we'll talk about this fade, this phase roster at length when we get to that topic of the show. But like you said, Will, this roster does seem absolutely stacked. Seems. Yes, but. especially from a Slayer standpoint. And that's what we've seen. Um, but what else is listed there? There is a video. It's like a clip from a stream. And it's why Renegade left. I believe Josh is going to play. Are you going to play it through your speakers again? Yeah. Yep. Just make it easier. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there there is a clip uh, of a little bit of detail as to why Renegade left C9. Um, we're going to play it for you live here. Uh, again, this is from Renegade's stream. Um, and again, this is just one short clip. But it all makes sense in the long run, obviously. So without further ado, here is Renegade uh, briefly on why he left C9. With them, and it's just like... And I don't think it's I don't think it's their fault. I think it's just my attitude and how I am. Like it just doesn't mesh well with them. Like I I think they're amazing players. I think we're fucking a C9 team is still gonna be good as fuck. Like I don't think they're gonna like they don't need me to like succeed. I just don't I don't think I mesh well with the mentality that that we had. Like I want a fucking team that goes hard every day. I want a team that like has better work ethic and like Sucks you can't speak your mind, yeah, it does. But I, those are the biggest reasons why, like, I, I I felt that way in the first place. But, I mean, I just, I want passion, bro. I want a team that wants it. And, like, I'm not saying they don't want it. I just, I just never felt that sense of, like, that sense of want. And I've, I've been with them for years, bro. It's been like that for years. And, like, I, I mean, maybe they do have it. And they do. It's not like it, it, it just dips and dives. It just dips and dives, you know, like. It just dips and dives, dips and dives. So 
Will and I were talking about this a little bit before we started the show. And then also before we get into this, uh, Winkler, welcome back. Says, Hey dudes, you're beautiful. You're beautiful too. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording the show and it just feels like he, he wanted to be a part of a team who had the same dedication, the same work ethic and the same passion that he does in terms of winning. Yeah. I, I, when he talks about C9, it feels like, all right, this is my opinion. So take it for what it is. Oh yeah. But it feel like, it feels like renegade is in overdrive. And while his team might have drive to win, he wants to grind and consistently and continuously it's like when you're obsessed with something right Mm -hmm. and maybe someone else that you know is interested in it but not as obsessed with it so you go overboard and you want that same person to be overboard with you sometimes you just don't get that and if he wasn't gelling with the team it's going to cause problems yep and clearly like he we know he's got to be friends with the members of that team considering how long they team for and whatnot yes um so when he said that he fully expects them to be great like without him. Um, and it sounds like there's no ill will there. It's just like he had other thoughts in mind. Uh, he wants to go at 150% all the time. And maybe his teammates aren't willing to do the same. Um, and it sounds like he's given it some deep thought. I mean, obviously he's on a different roster for fuck's sake, but like, no, this, this had to, have, he had to have given it some deep thought and who knows when this happened. Well, are you saying the move itself? No, or? like when these thoughts started in his head, like maybe. Well, well the, the reports came out pretty soon after KC and they didn't win, right? Right, but I'm wondering if it if, if the thoughts started before that. I would think it did. And KC was just the tipping point of being like, right, like if he, we didn't win this event, then fuck it, I'm going to well, start looking. Yeah, he may have been talking to them, wanting to grind more, wanting to yeah. scrim more, and they weren't in, again, opinion, f- speculation. And he was at that point, and when they didn't win, because maybe they were on cruise control after winning a lot. Yeah. Um, they went back-to-back. I mean, they won Raleigh and Anaheim. Yes. Yeah, back-to-back, yeah. So Convincingly, maybe, too. So maybe they weren't putting in as much work as he wanted. And, yeah, losing was, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of this. And I don't want to put words in their mouths. No. no. Um, but, like, my thought, again, opinion, my thought was, when when this when the clip came out, my thought was like you said with the cruise control thing, maybe it was with the other members that guys we're winning hand over fist here. Like we we don't we can chill. Nobody's at our level yet. We haven't been we haven't been tested yet. Yeah. And again, this is pure speculation. Like this is my my thought when that clip came out was like they they were winning fucking easily. Like it wasn't. I mean, hell, with Raleigh, it was United and Ryan Newb and whatnot uh, talking about how they were the team that put in the most practice uh, leading into that event, right? Leading into the first event of Infinite. Now, granted, it was very quickly after the release of Infinite that Raleigh happened, but United did say that they put in the most practice. They get to the grand final, and Cloud9 just act like they're a fucking AM team and <laughs> annihilate them. Like, seriously, for, for lack of a better term, they annihilated them. Yeah. And then we have Anaheim coming up um, and it was like, well, who's, who's going to stop them. Right. And then nobody, nobody fucking stops them. And, and what optic took a couple games off them or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but no cloud nine just immediately destroyed them. And then with KC, like, I wish I had that same mentality of you never count Sentinels out of anything, but I mean, I sat here and touted that it was optics time. It was their time to fucking win. And I mean, granted, we're getting back. We're getting off the cloud nine thing at my point, but whatever. Uh, Maddie says, well, we all know they don't like to scrim. Maybe Renegade saw everyone else getting better and wanted to start putting in more work and the team didn't think so. And yeah. That, yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe it was a cruise control thing that they were just winning so much and nobody was testing them in a challenge wise. Then fuck it. Why? Why would we? I don't, I don't like this mentality. And again, this is all, spe- this is me with an opinion, not saying I'm not trying to speak for them, but like, if that is their mentality, then I fuck, I want out too. Like I wouldn't want to be a part of that, but the C9 system seems similar to the league of legends team coaching this spring. Oh, welcome back. No, no. Good to see you. Also Maddie, of course. Welcome back. 
Um, yeah, like we'll talk about phase overall shortly. Yeah. Second topic of the show. Should we uh, move into scrims and tournament league recaps? I think we should. I think it's a good idea. Um, for scrims, I just want to talk about some things that I learned about optic. Again, we're going to talk about phase later in the show, but for optic specifically, um, was watching some scrims of theirs and here are a few things that I personally took away. Uh, things that they should be working on consistently. Players continue to push when it is not needed. So, you know, I think of a stronghold situation where let's say recharge, for example, um, they would have B and C and trippy would push into a, when it is not needed and they have people spawning in a, and then since trippy decides to go out there, uh, lucid has to now follow suit to try to help and completely breaks the entire setup. Um, situations like that. That was one example of, of what I literally saw. And Lucid talked about, um, again, this is just things to work on. Lucid talked like in that moment, he said, trippy, like, don't go up there. Like, don't go in there. Yeah. But he did anyway. And so wasn't listening to, uh, the person that was calling out the setup that should be taken when you don't have to go for three caps guys, I'm going to give you a heads up here in case you didn't know. In Stronghold, you do not need to get a triple cap to win the game. Crazy. I know. It's crazy, I, but you don't. So I, I think I'm, I watched the same game you did then. Yeah. That call from Lucid did come a little late. Trippy was already on like a balcony. No, but but that's the thing. Trippy said he was going in there. And Lucid's like, no, you don't. We don't need to go in there. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then the setup was, I think they still won the game. But like the setup got broken Right, because well, they did get slays, and then they were spawning. Yeah, the enemy team was spawning C because Trippy was over an A. Yep, and so it's just pushing when they didn't need to push. Um, another thing is players not always listening to comms, including setup callouts, putting the team in worse positions. Again, that was just one example. Um, and then when everyone is firing on all cylinders, the team looks unbeatable. But that's the thing, right? Yeah. My problem with optic is that they will have a strat ready to go and like, they'll be focused on it, but then players start doing their own thing and it's not complacency. It's not being comfortable or anything. It's just like, I, I, it's someone will do something. Players will start going out on their own. They'll start losing individual fights. They won't be pushing as a duo anymore and it gets away from them. Here's the problem that I'm seeing. Sure. It kind of goes along with what you're saying is say it's king of the hill, oddball, re whatever. I mean, it could be any map really. Yeah. But let's just take a live fire game I witnessed. Um, Lucid was on C or C would be by tower. Mm -hmm. um, formal was over him. Someone was towards nest and green and Lucid called out that, oh, they're going to be spawning A because of where their setup was. Yeah. He just knew the spawn. Makes sense. And I think sometimes the players take that as, let's go get them in A. Yeah. Versus no watch for them just coming from those angles because it's right. the same thing. Formal and I believe APG went down and pushed Rat Tunnel. And Lucid was like, oh shit, now I got to get off this tower. Right. And, and I'm alone. Go, go help them mm -hmm. or they lose that power setup because if they're coming out of A, if they're coming A plat, the green and uh, nest guy can shoot them. If they're coming mid, Lucid's in tower, formal's there. And then if they come over shield, Lucid can see that side too. Like they right. have the setup. And you don't, and that's the other thing too. If you're pushing bottom mid, like that's just a choke point for you to die in. Well, I think the idea was for APG was that they're going to spawn a push out a he's going to come up behind them as the fights go down. That was the idea. Sure. And it just didn't work. No, like I, I'm all about getting advantageous positions, but there needs to be cohesion around that. Mm -hmm. Like it needs to be you, you there. 
they need to listen to comms more. As we learned from Casey is that uh, when Formal and Lucid were talking, Lucid is trying to take on more of that IGL role on the team. Yep. Um, Formal, we already know, is a great player to like uphold a team. We already know that. But he is trying to push more onto Lucid to be that leader on the team. And as a result, you you have Lucid calling out setups in the comms during scrims. And my my only worry is that they're just not listening enough and maybe not even listening, but just acting on it. They're, they're getting too much into their push, push. Yeah. And when they don't need to, and at the same time, maybe, maybe them playing that more aggressive type role, it could be better for certain players on that team. Um, because they want to keep their, they want to keep their hands warm. They want to be able to remain in fights, but at the same time, it's as we've learned with a Sentinels, especially at KC is that you do not need to play overly aggressive. You do not need to be continually pushing in order to win a game. Sentinels are a very much more methodical team. And it's something that we, we, we learned during the halo five rise of them, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, they can play both types of game and they can really play both types of game perfectly. I'm talking about Sentinels right now. Um, they can play the hyper aggressive team, but they can slow things down on a dime, right? Yeah. Optic need to push themselves to do that, to play like that. The, the thing I'm not hearing from comms mm -hmm. either that I would, I think they could really use is like when someone decides to push, like, Joey, come with me. You know, Tommy, come. I'm going to go this way. Look over here. You yep. know, you're not hearing that that's the, the big call outs are happening, but not the small ones that could. And uh, that could help for sure. Yes. I didn't point for that, but that worked out perfectly. That was a good timing. It was. Uh, Katana with the three month resub. Thank you so much. You get a woo. And then uh, Legend says the one thing I see when Lucid speaks is that no one acknowledges what he says. They might hear him, but I don't hear them say anything back when he talks. Yeah. And that, again, that could very well be another issue that they need to work on. I just don't want them, because like I said here, when everyone's firing on all cylinders and everyone's paying attention and listening, it's, it's they're unbeatable. It's really good. It is really good. It's just, I'm worried that they're going to continually get themselves in the same spot over and over and over again, where Lucid will make a call out. Lucid will call for a play to be made. Maybe someone does something about it, but it's not. Like it's not followed through. It's not stuck with. And it, it's just, it gets back to that whole stronghold situation. You do not need to push for a third cap. If you can keep them spawning in one area, if you have them locked on spawns, you can continually stop them in that spawn. You do not need to push forward further. Hmm. Play a more methodical approach. Now, granted, if you're outright, destroying them and consistently having three or four down over and over and over again, absolutely go for your three cap, but you don't need to. And it really hurts them more cases than it helps them. And I know these are just scrims and scrims are not everything we talk about all the time, but I, if this translates into tournament play, we're going to have another KC on our hands. And they're going to perform very poorly. Like, they need to acknowledge that Lucid, if Lucid is to be the leader of that team, then they need to acknowledge that he is the leader of that team and they need to pay attention. And maybe that also means that Lucid needs to speak up too. He usually is, if you watch their scrims, yes, he's usually the one speaking up after the game Yep, and saying, hey, I think we needed to do this. We need to do this. It's if it, it's... The question, is that communication being listened to and acted upon? Right. And as as we've heard from casters and analysts and so on and so forth, is that uh, it's not about communicating everything. It's about communicating the important things. Yeah. Um, there are times where less communication is more depending upon the situation. Where if you have everybody, and I, I'm at fault for this too, like even just during matchmaking games, we have there, there's multiple times where I'll just be calling things out as I see them but not taking a step back and be like, is this really helping my team or not? When really it's not. So I need to take a step back and think about what's actually going to help the team in this situation. What types of setups can we do? Am I being shot at? Can I get away and then call somebody out so I can get some help? 
whatever it may be. Instead of just calling out that person's one shot. Oh, I'm dead. This guy's one shot on me. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, that doesn't help. So things that potentially they need to work on as well. Um, Joey slice and like BR. Yes. And BR breaks. Thank you guys for the follows. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, BR breaks says HS pro Talk, What did you guys eat for dinner? <laughs> chicken. We, yeah. Grilled chicken. Grilled. Ch- I grilled up some chicken, my man. Got a little rub on there. It was, it was fucking a, good. It was a good seasoning. It was good. It was very good. What did you have for dinner, Briggs? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's it's just the things that I... N- Yo, what's up, Collect? Yo, what up? How's it going? Um, It's just the things that I noticed about their scrims. And it's, it's the things that I hope that they're able to clean up. Sure. And prepare themselves, not only to, for the super. Um, It just it sucks that the super's online. Uh, which, again, when we get to the super preview, it... I, I say that this is a real test for these teams. And while it technically is, the real, real test is going to be Orlando. Of course. Because yeah. while everybody seems, like everyone and their mom seems to be going to Texas right now. like For the Super? Yeah. yeah the yeah. real test is going to be Orlando. And I really just hope that not just Optic, but all these teams are able to really hone things in and just... I'm really excited. We always talk about the more competition at the top, the more exciting it's yeah. going to be, the more, the be- just the better the event will be. So it's going to, with all the shakeups too, this is, it's, it's online, which is not the best test, but it's our first test since the, the shakeup. It is. And as with phase that we know of, like they, they don't have a ton of practice leading into this event, leading into the super, but you got to take what you get. So it is what it is. Yeah, that's what I learned about Optic over their past scrims. All right. So, Will, without further ado, would you mind going through the tournament and league recaps over the last week? Yes. We have some I championship results from the Halo Rec League. They're not Love called it. championship. They're champion. They're chumps. Love not it. champs. They're chumps. So, here we go. Halo Rec League Challenger pre-made division chumps results. He divided, takes it home, and I couldn't think of a better name now after this was made before all the drama, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, this how is, fucking funny now is that? Perfect. How he ironic. Um, he divided. Halo Rec League Master pre-made Chumps results, and this team was straight tilted. And so, if not mistaken, I believe uh, Legend C4 was part of that E divided roster as well. Congrats, Legend, on taking home the dub. Congratulations, Corey. Halo Rec League also had their FFA Series 2 finals, and yes. here is how it played out. And this clearly shows, again, that it doesn't fucking matter what your placings were week after week. All that matters is this. Yes. So in eighth place, we did have the amazing C4, a.k.a. Legend C4, in our chat. Seventh was Golden Guy with a bunch of threes. Uh, six was Benjo Stark. Fifth, Snake HTX. Sure. Uh, four was El Generic. Third went to Bane 117. Second, Finisher 13. And first went to Leaf 13 or B. If, if they're trying to make a B with the one and the three. I don't know. But there you go. Leaf coming through with the dub. I mean, hey, Shio says, yo, the first and third seeds didn't even show up to the semifinals. Well, they got fucked then, didn't they? Well, ouch. Sucks to suck, loser. Also, uh, <laughs> CR... Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to fucking say your name. CRSLK? Uh, Sir Sulk? Thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. I saw if I butchered your name. You, you tried. That's what matters, right? Yeah, you, that's it. I fucking <laughs> tried. Uh, you know... If you want to... Phonetically spell your name in chat so we can say it right. Please feel free to do so. Yeah, I gave it like a good old college try, you know? <laughs> All right. After going through my second stint in school, I get that now. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's saying. Beautiful. Good old college try. <laughs> Next up, the eSports Arena Series E. This is a weekly tournament, right? Uh, weekly? Yes, that is correct. They have uh, different uh, types, but yes, this yes. was a weekly event. Fourth place went to crowd pleasers. It included King J, Mines, Kratos, and Piggy. 
Third went to Excel. Uh, mort- mortally, Tony, Shock, and Envor. Triggers Down took second. It was Carmea, Neighbor, Hysteria, and Aperture. And first place team is Exo. Uh, Shokoi? Bid teaches Hativ and Huss. Taking it home. And Shio says, uh, collect congrats on the super qual- uh, qualifier. Um, yeah. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> get off that team. <laughs> get off that team. Right. Holy fucking moly. We'll move on to the HCS FFA series. We'll start with the EU region. And fourth place went to uh, Bastos. Third went to Mighty. Second was Snipe Drone, and first went to Legend. I believe that's back to back for Legends, as a matter of fact. Getting the Legend. Pla- Legend. Yeah, getting yes. those placing points. Absolutely. For North America in the FFA series, fourth place went to. I think it's UVU. I still want to do Kruvu. <laughs> do it. No, it's Kruvu. We're going to go with Kruvu. Uh, se- third went to Exemplified. Second, Porky J. And first, OG Halo Noob. Taking it home. Yes, indeed. Been placing at the type frequent or type top frequently, right? Yeah. Should have qualified a week later, but all good. (laughs) (laughs) We'll just leave it there. Uh, FFA series for Mexico. Fourth place went to Dolan season. Third, Johan MC. Second, Nugget. And first, tapping buttons. Dominant as always. I think it's back to back for tapping as well. Sounds about right. I know what Josh is about to say. <laughs> Dude, my, I'm not, I'm not going to fuck with you. My, my initial thought was I had two thoughts in my head when the open tournament was going to be taking place uh, to, to, to solidify the last four pool play teams was imagine space station, not get, not getting one of those four spots. Mm. I, with all the teams remaining, no offense to the other players involved, but like I couldn't see them not getting one of those last pool play spots considering the other players involved. And then my other thought was, um, I mean, they have to get it, right? And you did. So there you go. I can't wait till we talk about pools, though. That's going to be fun. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, another tournament here, the Europa Halo Summer Series number three. Three. This Three. took place on the 30th of July. Ooh. Fourth place went to Hellfire Club. Great name if you are a Stranger Things fan. Uh, this included Eastwood. I'm going to go with Meesty. Met, Metsy? Meetsy. Meetsy. Yeah. Meet, yeah. S-Y-Y-Y. Uh, Zajeo and Crucial. Third went to Three Gods and Lumi, which was Hollers, Glory, Lu- Lumiser. And Crossman, second went to Regain, Valkyrie, Milzy, Batchford, and Desired. Mm-hmm. And first went to Vex Gaming, Squashy, Looney, Warlord, and Sticka. I, I'm sad that Giga Chads didn't make it further. They're yeah, fifth, sixth fifth, team. Sixth, I love that name. That's a good name. Fucking Giga Chads. <laughs> love it. We did have another tournament here. I don't think I've heard of this one before. Here JJ we go. Events 4v4. Here we go. Is this for all the... Uh... Hold up. Uh, Alien, welcome to the live show. Um, obviously, I recognize you. Hope you're having a great fucking night. Good to see you. Welcome. Go ahead. In this tournament, we are going to be talking about. JJ Events 4v4. Fourth mm-hmm. place went to Digging Deep. This was Posey, Serial. Uh, I'm going to go with Llama God. And employee. Third went to FaZe Clan. Uh, mm. Snipe down Falcated Spartan and Renegade, their first run here. Second went to Pioneers, Soul Snipe, Talik, Druck, and Nick. And first went to Gamers First, Squalite, Boobadoo, Swish, and Predevinator. Okay. So, don't want people to jump to conclusions with this event. Um, and actually, I said I was going to talk about it now. We'll talk about it in the phase topic because I have it all listed there. So Perfect. just know that to give a type of uh the fuck word am I looking for here? Um 
to give some foreshadowing leading into that topic, G1 beat FaZe twice, once to send them to losers, another in losers to wipe them out of the tournament, to knock FaZe out and FaZe getting third place in that event. Go ahead. We'll talk about it later. All right. Um, we do have the open series next. Uh, fourth went to Galaxy. It was Jerry, Goroloco, Drax, and uh, Television. This is for Mexico. Mexico, yes. Way. I didn't mention that. It's for Mexico. Third went to Alter Esports. Uh, Grimsty, Sepsters, Zaron, and Dragonac. Second went to Timbers Esports. Strikey, Gambino, Noble, and Nugget. And first went to Cintanegra. Uh, Guardian, Magical, Bullet, and Johan. For the EU region, fourth place went to Blackhand. Uh, Lunny, Glory, Mista, and uh, Kayader? Kayadab? Kayadab? Uh, third went to Quadrant, SLG, Chick, Nurex, and Shad. Second went to Navi, Kimbo, so snaky, Mighties, and Jimbo. And first went to Ascend, Sika, Respectful Legend, and Snipe Drone. That was close between Navi and Ascend there at the end. I think Navi reset the bracket, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh... I- Ascend, just do what Ascend does. Yeah, and I, I, mean. I, I do want that gap. It feels like Navi is closing the gap at times. Yeah. Sometimes. No, for sure. It's And it's just... But again, they just can't close it out. And that's mm-hmm. a problem that they need to work on is that they just can't close games out. So That's fair. Yep. It's fair. Um, okay, HTS and a super open bracket. Your top four teams that then qualified for pools, right? Yes, that's uh, correct. Include Need and Org. This is Fluriously, Name, JK7, Gold Star BR, Forbidden Fruit, Envor, Tony, Hysteria, and Arctic. Uh, Crowd Pleasers, King J Mines, Kratos, and Piggy. And then Space Station, Collect, Tylenol, Suppressed, and Ace. Yes. And then the fifth through eighth teams I also want you to go through because those they, teams qualified for cha- uh Champ bracket losers Loser. round one. Yes. So this is going to be incognito, which is Carmea, Abature, Neighbor, and Hativ. Exo, which is uh, Shokoi, uh, Bid Teaches, Shock, and Huss. Arsenal, which is, uh, is it Nest Lake, Rowan to Boat, Mo and Biscuit Kappa, and Blackhand, uh, Cortex, Sylvanic, Haynes, and Piles. There you go. Thank you very much for going through those, Will. Of course. Let's get into our first topic of the week. Uh, a fun but not so fun one. More stupid than anything. But um, because believe it or not, this is going to shock the world. I actually give praise to Spartan later on in the show. But right now is not that time. Okay? That's later. But not right now. Uh, so Spartan put out this gem. And he said, I don't know why Ryan Oob is so obsessed with me, but I'll take it as a compliment considering he wouldn't have our job right now if it wasn't for me. You're welcome, buddy. No other org wanted him and nobody wanted to team with him. The only reason they got Manny was through a forced trade. He should be thanking me he still has an org because if I stayed, he was gone. Woo-wee! So, there's that. And then uh, Ryan, who put out a tweet um, that said, I love hearing excuses, uh, specifically bad ones. Keep complaining about not being able to kill people from Texas when you're on lower ping than we are. Play better Halo and stop being divas. Will, do you know the context behind that tweet? Because I think you do. You mentioned it earlier to me. Is this based Pop- off their, their ace? Oh, y- yeah, it might be. Yeah. yeah I bet it is. Yes. So what what happened? Oh, gosh. They... um. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, they. I remember texting you about this scenario and kind of forgot about it since then. But um, Ryan Noob got in an eights with Renegade and Spartan. Renegade and Spartan were on the opposite team of him. And uh, I caught, I don't know if they had just started or were at the end, but the last two matches me seeing that Ryan was going up against Spartan. I had both their streams up. <laughs> oh yeah. It's going to be a gem. And Ryan Noob's team beat Spartan's team. And uh, Spartan and Renegade just instantly started bl- blaming the game, the game's crap, paying all this stuff and just quit the eights. Like it felt like in the middle of it, like it never felt like it was resolved. Okay. And, 
they just continued to complain. It wasn't no GGs, you guys beat us. It was just excuses being thrown out. Um, I do believe that Spartan got Spartan got back into an eights with Ryan New Blader after a couple different people joined. Sure, with I think Barcode got in and uh, someone else, but it was just a lot of excuses at that moment. Things got heated. Yeah. Um, so we joked for a while that that rivalry between the two of them had never actually gone away. Like even when they were teaming on a United together, like there was no way that that rivalry just disintegrated be like, Hey, we're best friends now because we already know you don't have to be best friends to be teaming together. It's just, it obviously be helpful if you guys are friends, but that's besides the point. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's hilarious that correct me if I'm wrong here and chat, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I hadn't seen Ryan noob say anything like online in terms of like tweets or whatever until after Spartan posted his, which makes me wonder like, why did Spartan even have to put it out there to begin with? It's like poking the bear, right? Yeah. It, yeah. But we already know who Spartan is. Um, and clearly how he's acted before has not impacted his ability to be on another team, which is fine and not fine in its own right. He is who he is. And I, like I, when he put out that tweet saying that he was going to, uh, be better and be a better person within the community. I hope he sticks to that. I really do hope he sticks to that. Um, we've talked about that ad nauseum before, but him posting that when I, I don't, um, I could see Ryan Oob saying something in a stream, but I hadn't seen a clip. I hadn't seen him post anything on Twitter, so on and so forth. Un- like until after Spartan put out his, um, Maddie says, I think Spartan put that out because there's a clip of Ryan Oob killing Spartan and saying how bad he is. I mean, yeah, there was teabagging and body disrespect. Sure. But why do you have, why does he have to go to Twitter about it? Like, I get it. It's your soapbox. You do you dude. But like, you didn't have to, you didn't have to fucking air that out. Who gives a shit? It's a fucking video game, bro. Calm down. Um, but let's say there's some truth to this. Okay. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that there's some truth to this because I was thinking about it and he said no other org wanted him and nobody wanted to team with him. The only reason they got Manny was through a forced trade. So I don't know if Spartan was sitting in the backroom deals, you know, like wheeling and dealing with King Nick to try to get him the fuck out of there because we know that King Nick and Spartan were good friends are good friends. Yeah. Um, but man, hypothetically speaking, if there's some truth to that, that's fucked. But then again, like the thing, the thing that gets me is that again, correct me if I'm wrong. Have we heard rain say anything regards to any of this? At all, ever? No, nah, I I mean, honestly, I feel like if I personally was in that situation, I'd probably just keep my mouth shut, let them do Oh, yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah, because clearly he's not like, he doesn't appear to be in the thick of it. But, like, I would love to know, just personally, I'd love to know what he, what his thoughts are. I'd really want to know what his thoughts are in this entire situation being like the guy that nobody fucking talks to on the team. It seems like, um, legend says, honestly, who is rain? LOL. That's how much he doesn't speak. I mean, no, he speaks. It's just, you know, not publicly. Yeah. He's just, he's hanging out. He's like, I'm part of this team too, man. I do my thing. Royal two, uh, Maddie says Royal two said it sounded like the KC play is KCP players didn't want to make a change, but the org wanted to. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's something. That's something. Okay. I mean, we've talked about before. Business is business. 
Yeah, I mean, it does suck for the players when that thing's happened, but if a, if the orgs are doing that and they have the ability to, it's it's kind of – it can happen. Yeah. Anthony says, uh, thank God NA Super is Friday. HDS Kansas City feels so long ago, dude. It does. Oh, man. Oh. Not, not only that, but it still feels so long to Orlando. Like, unbelievable, man. Also, welcome to the live show. Um, Yeah. Also, you know what else is funny, too? The Super is uh, – uh, COD Champs weekend, too. It's COD Champs this weekend. Oh, boy. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, too. Well, a uh, good thing the uh, data cap reset for me. <laughs> there you go. There you, Jesus Christ. Thanks a lot, Comcast. Thanks, Comcast. Um, Maddie says, and I believe the Ryan Noob not being wanted part is true because of EU's statement when Spartan benched himself. Yes, and that, that also would make sense because for those who don't recall, when EU United put out their statement, they said that they, they, would, they wanted to build around Spartan. And if Spartan ever wanted to come off of the bench, he could do so. Like it, it's 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 of his own decision to do so, and they would obviously want him back. And they said that they wanted to build around him. Um. So, there you have it. And maybe, I don't want to. I don't want to wish this upon any player because I don't. Uh. Well. Besides a different team, but that's besides the point. I already talked about that. Uh, what's to say that once this first year of the HCS for Infinite is over and these players did sign one-year contracts that United don't seek to continue with Ryan? Maybe, maybe it was a situation where, sure, they don't want... They would have loved to keep Spartan and build around him, but maybe it was like, hey, if no other team wants Ryan Noob, I mean, fuck, we can't just cut him. That's money out of our pocket. I don't know what their stipulations were from the contract, but maybe if it is a one-year contract, then maybe it is a situation where after Worlds is done for this season, they and when contract uh, negotiations are available, they don't seek to renegotiate with Ryan. And they're like, you know what? Thank you for your time. Thank you for what you provided for this team. We'll see you later. Have we seen uh, Ryan Noob Pistola team up before? Oh, God, I don't remember. Because I think that could be an interesting combo. My old halo head does not recall. Anyway, just, chat, feel free to chime in. Just, just thinking out loud there. No, that I that know it's off topic, cool but too. it just popped up. Sure. And then there's also the question of like, Oh, what about Mick and Pistola again? Ooh, you yeah. know, that coming back into it. Uh, Maddie says, keep Manny suspector build around them. That's what I would do. I don't, I don't see what's wrong with that at all. Um, we talked about it earlier. I think Manny, and, but then again, like I think Manny and suspector could be really good together with, Rain and Ryanoob, if they're able to work out their differences in play styles together and make something nice, like that could be something awesome within that team. Anthony says, speaking of Ryanoob and Spartan, the drama is just building up on that, uh, their Twitter in the last two hours. What happened now? I'm going to his tweet. There's probably, did you meant 24 hours or literally two hours? No, there's people commenting on his reply. Oh, fuck. Who gives a shit? I don't know if Spartan has said anything yet. No, I'll, I doubt I'll do it. research if you want to keep right. reading. Sounds good. And Legends of Season 2 will be interesting. Absolutely. I mean, fuck, the, the roster mania leading up into the Super in Orlando is interesting. But yeah, I'm just happy that the, because my worry and my thought, my thought and my worry was that teams, the organizations would feel compelled to keep who they had in their rosters throughout the rest of the season, regardless of what the fuck was happening. And then we would just have an unbelievable shit show for these events leading into the world championship. Um, but it seems like the moves have finally happened. And I just hope that there's enough time for these teams to gel, to have as much competition at, at the top as possible. That's what I really hope. Um, all right. Topic number two. Do you have anything you want to add or did you find anything else? Um, hang on. I am hanging on this. Uh, he just replied to his original. I love hearing excuses tweet that we talked about. What did he say? And um, he just said the guy complaining was literally on better paying. And then Spartan, oh yeah, Spartan commented with a laughing, like the spit, like the yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Were, um, yeah, it's just 
he says you were you were on twenty five ping last night while we were on thirty, and you were complaining about Texas and still are Ryan Noob to Spartan. And that's really all I'm seeing, I guess. Unless there was there was more on that tweet. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. It's a, <laughs> Spartan replies. It's okay to believe in your delusions. Keep being you, boo. And then that was it. What's up, Shaggy Nades? Welcome. Says, yo, 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 missed the podcast today while I worked. Knew you'd be live tonight recording. Hell yeah, man. We're fucking here. We're here. Um, welcome, by the way. It's, it, that's my problem with Spartan. Always has been, always will be until he stops doing that. It's a vicious welcome. Um, phase up. Phase. Uh, we're going to talk about phase. In just one second, because the last point I want to make is this is literally, that's my problem with Spartan is that he, he's an adult who acts like a child online more than half the time. And granted, he could be the nicest fucking person when not on behind his keyboard or his phone, but, and I get it. It's, it's just beef within the game more than likely, or they probably just don't like each other, but. He says he's going to learn. He says he's going to move on. He says he's going to be better. And then he doesn't. And it's a consistent thing that happens time and time again. Like I said, I have nothing against the person of him. It is who he is. I just wish he would take his word, his own word, learn from it, move on. And this whole, this whole Twitter spat, like here's, here's the point I'm trying to make. There are tons and tons and tons of different players out there and they all take things differently, right? And they all manifest things differently and they all fuel themselves differently. And in Spartan's case, my problem is that he continues to air this shit and for better, I mean, for lack of a better phrase here, it hasn't really amounted much to anything for him winning wise. Now, granted, United probably wasn't a good factor in that because he was, for lack of a better term, he was stuck there, I guess you could say. Um, and it, clearly it seems like he tried to make it work as best he could with that team um, because they were a top four team. And then now you're on phase. And clearly, as we're going to talk about shortly, there are a lot of things that they need, that they need to work out there. Um, and he has the skills to win. Like he absolutely has the skills to win. It's just, personally, again, this is all personal. Personally, I just wish he would manifest these things differently, not air the shit online and just use it to fuel him. Like, Oh, you see a clip of Ryan noob talking shit to you. Don't fucking go bitch about it online to your followers because yes, they're going to feed you. They, we already know that. Maybe that's why he's doing, it. I'm not going to, I don't want to talk for him, but like if I were him, I'd manifest that. I'd be like, Oh, that's how you fucking feel about me. Okay. Check me out. The super check me out. Orlando. When I'm sitting here on phase and I'm and I'm fucking fighting for first place at Worlds, what are you doing, Ryan Noob? Like that's that's how the rivalry should be. It shouldn't be these basically personal attacks that end up happening. Exactly. It always you know like it starts like this, like talking about ping and stuff. Yep. And it always uh, devolves into personal stuff, which leave it leave it on leave it on the, the field. Leave right? it on the metaphorical battlefield. Yeah. Leave it in game. Talk your shit. If you win a series against him on in a tournament on land or whatever, talk your shit, do it. That's all you, you deserve that. You earned that. You won that. But if it's a fucking, if you're playing eights when it doesn't mean anything and come on, man, hmm. just be better than that. And that, that also goes for Ryan too. I'm not trying to say like, Oh, Ryan, you're in the clear here. No, but at the same time, I'm not seeing Ryan Noob just going out of his way all the time to talk shit on Twitter because he doesn't. And then, yeah, when Spartan does, yes, he's going to go out. He's going to, he's going to uh, reply. Not directly at him, which again was petty that he should have just replied directly at him. Did later, but not initially. Just regardless, all this Twitter shit is fucking stupid. <laughs> it's just really fucking stupid. It honestly is. Leave it in the game for fuck's sake. All right. 
let's talk about phase. Topic number two of this week is, is phase going to succeed long-term? That's the question. When this team was rumored a little while ago, we kept talking about how we don't talk about speculation. We, we don't like to talk about um, rumors on the show very often because nothing's been confirmed. We don't want to fuel that. Yeah. Because if it doesn't happen and then people come back and be like, well, you talked about it. You said it was going to be a thing. No, 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 no. We never said it was going to be a thing. We said it would be cool if it was, this could be some, this could be a dangerous team. If it is a thing, you know what I mean? Anthony, thank you so much, man. That's greatly fucking <laughs> yeah. appreciated. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, so the phase roster was a rumor for a while. And Will and I were here live and in private. We talked about that this team could be fucking nasty on paper. And our one worry, Will, was you have four heavily, heavily Slayer dominant players on this team. No one is very objective proficient. Not to say they couldn't be, but they're not right now, right? And they seem to be the main slayers on their team. Yes, all four of them, the main slayers on their team. <laughs> so let's talk about that JJ tournaments, that JJ event that happened. Uh, so they lost twice against G1 to be knocked out with a third place finish in their first tournament debut, uh, like as a full squad and whatnot, with the JJ events four before. Um. Now, I said that there was something that I was going to actually agree with Spartan on. This is it. Spartan tweeted recent, like, quickly after they got eliminated and said the following. We're a brand new team coming from three separate teams with different structures and ideologies. We're not going to have instant success or be gods right off the rip this late into the season against teams with way more practice under their belts. We have a ton of to work on. Simple as that. People quick to jump to conclusions or judge based on online best of threes when we have maybe five scrims under our belt is just odd to me. Nonetheless, I'm confident, I'm beyond confident in our roster if we just put in the time and reps, critique each other, and keep working hard. And then in a reply to Active, if I'm not mistaken, he said the following, I need to IGL a bit harder. I'm not used to it, so I have to. I have work to do. We can slay heavy, but we're very objective, inefficient at the moment, and our comms most certainly need work. Definitely need a lot of reps. Very behind other teams right now. Hmm. Yes, folks. I agree with him. And Spartan? He actually took some accountability. In yes! That. Wow. Yes! That felt, that felt, that felt, I know! That felt great to read and see. And the worst part is that happened before the fucking Ryan Oob shit. Huh. Uh. Like, ah, uh, come on. You were so close. <laughs> No, but he did put this out there, and it and it's awesome. This is exactly, exactly what you want to see. And this is accountability. This is putting other people in their place respectfully. Yeah. Because Spartan, Tyler, I am right there with you. When I was reading the chat, stupidly, when I was reading the chat and whatnot, when you guys got eliminated, and I'm thinking to myself, man, these people have no idea the potential of this roster or they're just dick riding. Like, ah, fuck you guys. You know, it's Twitch chat. You never know. It's Twitch. Chat. It is Twitch chat. But that that's my thing is that people need to understand something here is that Spartan is yes. 100% correct in his statement. 100%. We were worried. We asked, who's going to be the in-game leader on this team? Who is going to take up that mantle? And who is going to hold everybody accountable, including themselves? And it sounds like Spartan is going to be that player. Because we were like, well, maybe he'll be sniped down because of his veteranship. Nope. Um, Falcade, it's too quiet. I'm just going to go out and say that on a, on a whim here. And then Renegade, I don't think so either. I think Renegade... Well, while he may call things out, I think he's more focused on his play. Um, so yeah, Spartan clearly appears to be the in game leader of that team as of right now. And he even said that he needs to work harder on that because he's never been in that role before. 
is clearly, as we understand, uh, Ryan Oob was the, is slash was the in-game leader of United. Um, so he never had to deal with it there. And who knows what's going to, who knows what's going to happen there. Um, I put a, in a separate note here, comparisons between United Sentinels and FaZe. So this gets back to the whole methodical versus aggressive approach to play styles, mm, okay. right? Um, something that we know or something that we've seen with FaZe is that they hold the W key the entire time. At least from what I've seen, it appears as though FaZe hold forward the entire time and, and they, they run more often than not as a group, which can be great and terrible at the same time. Because if you're running as a group and you're out there and you get two, three down, well, now you're two, three down and you ran as a group and now the other team has a complete advantage over you. But at the same time, if you're charging as a four group, you're able to get things more quickly, whatever it may be. So it's a give and take. My worry with phase with the new phase is that, and again, they're new right now. So they have things that they need to work on. And it's clearly been addressed here that they are objective and efficient. As we talked about, they need to work on objective. That's obvious, but they also need to work on slowing things down. This is my whole point about why there's always that statement of you never count Sentinels out of anything because of how they play the game, of how they're able to play the game and how they're able to change how they play the game at the stop of a dime. They, it's what teams should probably aspire to be. And I'm not saying that that is the end all be all play style that you need to be perfect at both. But from what I've seen so far in these, in this short half year so far within Halo Infinite's first year of HCS is that you cannot be just an aggressive team and win. You cannot be just a slow team and win. You need to be a hybrid. You need to be able to do both because you need to be able to play against both types as well. If you're playing against an overly aggressive team, you need to be able to take a step back and let them come to you. You need to be able to play off of that. And then as a result, play your game. If you're playing against a hyper restrictive team, you need to be able to make a decision on what play you're going to make and get in there. Because if you know they're going to be staying back and they're going to be waiting for you to make a play, feed off that. Again, this is just what I've seen, what I've witnessed in the first half of the year here, right? So we very well could see a heavily, uh, heavily aggressive team win. We could see a very heavily restrictive team win, but I just have not seen that yet. Now, people may look at me and be like, well, what about Cloud9 in the first two events of the year? Weren't they aggressive? Yes and no. They were able to capitalize on what the other team was doing and feed off it and win. If you, if you go back and watch those older tournaments, you would see that Cloud9 were able to slow down when they needed to. And that's, it's something that FaZe heavily need to work on if they're going to be a competitor at Worlds. Because we're going to get into our HCS uh, NA Super Preview shortly. And I just wish this event wasn't online. Because if it wasn't online, this would be a bigger test. But whatever. This is a good sneak peek. I guess you could say to Orlando where Orlando to me is the true test being on land. It's just, they need to be able to slow things down. And this is another thing from what I've heard, from what I've seen a lot of, a lot of finger pointing on this team really has been happening in comms. That could be part of trying to like Spartan said though, they all came from different teams with different ideologies and how to play. Mm -hmm. And they probably need to get together and talk about each other's roles, how they think they should all progress together. Yes. And this tournament was a first test for them. So I would assume things would get better from here. Right. And I don't want the, the reason why I bring up that JJ event is because I don't want people to look at that and be like, Oh my God, this team is absolute ass and they shouldn't have done this. This is terrible. They're going to be God awful. Because that's not the case. You you have players on that team 
like I, I understand that Renegade came in during Halo 5. And Renegade has seen immediate success, like once he joined that splice roster after he was on straight ripping. Um, but the fact of the matter is you have players who know how to win. That's the biggest thing. Snipe down is a multiple title winner. Um, Renegade is a multiple title winner. Spartan won a single event, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then Falcated is Falcated. But you have winners on that team. You have veteranship on that team. They know how to win. And all I hope that they do is like you said, Will, they, they sit down and they discuss who's doing what, how their play styles can gel together and how they're going to work through their deficiencies to become a better team. And yeah, hundred percent. I believe they'll be able to do it. Um, the team's too good on paper not to be able to do that. But if I'm going to give an early prediction right now, I don't think they win worlds. If I'm just going to give an early prediction right now, I don't think they win worlds. That's that's again, very, very early. I have not seen how they've, how they are going to perform in the super, how they're going to perform in Orlando, but that's just that Rob Strux says, we'll finally made it to a live show. Love you guys. Fucking love you too, man. Thank you. And thanks for the follow earlier. Greatly appreciated. Awesome. Welcome Thank to the live you. show. So nice. God. So nice. It's great. It is great. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot and I apologize. You are umming a lot. I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get caught from the chat, you know? All good. All good. Anything else you want to say about topic two there before we move on? Really just if FaZe want to become a top tier team in this, in this league for years to come, and they're brand new right now. Like, yes, these players have been around for a while, but they are a brand new team right now. And as Spartan said correctly, I might add, they know what they need to work on. It's just about capitalizing on that and actually working through the deficiencies as a team to become better. The last thing I want to add is I don't want to hear any more finger pointing. I don't want to hear any more blaming. I want them to work through their shit. If Spartans to be the in-game leader, listen to him, feed off him, play off him. Keep your comms in check. Slow things down. You don't need to be hyper-aggressive. This is a team-based game. And also, scrims are scrims. We know that. But play in twos if you need to. Don't be running together all at the same time. Get setups. Lock them down. Some of the same problems that Optic has. They just push when they don't need to. We already know you guys have the slaying power. That's undeniable and as Spartan said they need to work on objective and they have a lot of work to do they're brand new and I expect them to go far I expect them to go far anything you want to add before we move on no good all right it's time for the topic number three of the show our last topic of the show the HCS North American super preview yeah will yeah, I'm going to press the freaking button because we haven't used it Fuck. in so long. Yes. We're going to run through some roster recap. <laughs> All right. right. Abrupt that changes. It's too. wonderful. It's been so it's long wonderful. since we've done that. It's been a while. So, um, using that sound bite. Here we go. Go ahead. We're going to run through the teams and the players on those teams that I have qualified. If you don't know them after the shakeups, you will now. If you don't mind, though, please read at the top of that graphic what that says, too. Pool play qualified. Yes, because right? if you keep well, going yes, down. Well, yes, because the, the the bracket qualification. Yes. Which we already kind of went through earlier. Yeah, but, but just so the people We'll know. reiterate. Yeah. All right, starting off with your reigning oh Kansas City champion, Sentinels. It's Frosty Lethal Royal 2 and Snake Bite. Wait, I thought Renegade was going to be on that team. Nah, shit didn't work I out. I thought Lethal was retiring. What He's the still fuck there. is this? <laughs> I thought they didn't like each other. This is bullshit. Well, they're going to figure it out. 
Collect. Oh, Lord. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Cloud9. I'm not sorry, Collect. Includes Bound, Eco, Penguin, and Stellar. Optic Gaming. APG, Formal, Lucid, and Trippy. Pioneers, Druck, Nick, Soul Snipe, and Tolik. G2 Esports, Gilkey, Sab, Straight Sick, and uh, it says TBA. Yeah, so like, D- is it barcode or not? D- what the, uh, they have three-fourths of their roster, so is do. it barcode or not? That's all. I, I would know. think so at this point. Yeah, I think so too. Hey, uh, Collect, you got any fucking uh, intel for us? There's some behind the scenes. DMs are open, but. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, moving on, G1, Predevinator, Boobadoobo, Swish, and Squally. FaZe Clan is now Falcated, Renegade, Snipe Down, and Spartan, E United, Manny, Rain, Rhinoob, and Suspector. That is a. It's, yeah, it's a good group right there. Good group. Next up, also, Plu. Plu, plu play? Pool, pool played. played. No, I'm done. No. Pool play qualified. Yeah. Complexity. Uh, Monster Vetra, Neuronical and Cycle, Oxygen Esports, Common, Triton, Bowman, Nemesis, Fnatic, Jazeera, Rami, Septify, and Super CC, uh, Team Called Lions, Burton, per- uh, Parzelli, Hotshot Ghost, and Mortality, Space Station, Ace, Collect, Suppressed, and Tylenol. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there he is. Uh, Forbidden Fruit, Envor, Tony 2, Turn, Hysteria, and Arctic. Need an Org includes Fluriously, its name, JK7, and Gold Star BR. And then Crowd Pleasers is Kratos, Mines, Piggy Sane, and King J. Okay, before you continue, I, I've i never met I've never met Kratos IRL. Okay. Just know him for what he is in the game. And kind of outside of the game. I just feel bad for King J. Go ahead. Elim bracket round one qualified. So this is where they will start their tournament. Uh, Blackhand is Cortex, Sylvanic, Haynes, and Piles. Exo, uh, it's like Shocky or Sh- Shakoi. Uh, Hus, Shock Kill, and Bid Teaches. Incognito is Carmea, Aperture, Neighbor, and uh, Hativ or Hativ. Arsenal includes Mo Hundreds, uh, Neast Lake. Rowan and B cap. There's uh, the roster recap for the upcoming HCS Super. Thank you, Will. Let's go through pools. Okay. Pool A includes Sentinels, E United, Complexity, and Crowd Pleasers. If I'm just going to go based off rating, um, fuck it. I'm going to say Sentinels take first in the pool. United takes second. Complexity take third and crowd pleasers take fourth in that pool. There was a team. I said this before. This was before they made a roster change, but I'm going to stick with it. If there's a team to pay attention to in this super, pay attention to complexity. There are a team I said, pay attention to at KC, if I'm not mistaken or something like that. Pay attention to complexity. They're a team I have my eye on. They're a team I, I've had my eye on for a while now. Um, What do you say for pool A? I agree with same. same okay. uh, if United doesn't gel with the new... Uh, complexity over them? It could possibly be. Yep, if, that's if, same thought. If it, just, it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You don't know until you get into that tournament uh, environment. Same thought. Uh, the only reason why I included E United over complexity in this regard is because I think E United have the better overall talent. Um, more consistent talent, I guess you could say more, more consistent players. That's why I put them ahead of complexity, but I could also see that being the case. Uh, pool B, pool B, pool B, cloud nine phase oxygen and need an org. Um, I mean, for me, that's just the same right down the list. I think so too. I just can't. As with everybody, we just can't wait to see Cloud9 versus FaZe. It's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, dramatic. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Great time. Um, But I will say, yeah, I think it's still, I still think it's Oxygen over Need and Org. I do. So yeah, one, two, three, four there. We'll see. And don't worry, Collect. We'll get to your pool too. Don't worry. 
Um, Briggs says, thoughts on the future of SSG? Well, since Collect is here, Collect needs to get off that team. That's uh, I've said it a million times. Or they need to realize, I, I mean, get he's facing you. Collects the main, he's pop, he popped off on that team and, yeah. and, and if do anything, restructure around him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know my full thoughts on that, just go watch episodes past. Like it's there. Talk about it consistently. And I'm sorry, collect like it, like a, it's literally nothing against you. Um, as I hope you're aware, uh, and I'm not just saying that because y- you you listen to the show. Like, I sincerely mean that. It's ever since I've been watching that team. Here's my soapbox on it. A- ever since watching that team, SSG have the best merch in the game by far. That's like the best thing that they're best at. And ever since the first event, I'm like, oh, this team just doesn't seem like it's it at all. And then they went through like three or four different players. And I'm like, Guys, there's fucking one, technically two common denominators here as to why this shit keeps happening the way it does, in my opinion. And that's Ace and Elamite. Strip it down, start over. Rip it to the studs. Moving on. Pulsey. Optic Gaming, G1, Fanatic, and Forbidden Fruit. Okay, this one, I have a little bit of a shakeup, but not by much. I don't want people to think, I don't want people to think that I think that Fnatic, or I know that G1 is a terrible team, because I don't, by any stretch of the imagination. But in all of the tournaments that they've played in, they've yet to play against the top of the top talent. I guess you could include FaZe, but they're a new team, realistically speaking. So I'm excluding the JJ event that just happened. But G1 have yet to play against top of the top teams. Okay? In a tournament format. With that in mind, I'm actually going to do a flip here. But it's not on G1. Optic Gaming are still going to take first. G1 are going to take second in this pool. And then Forbidden Fruit, I have over Fnatic. You do. Fnatic have yet to do anything in my mind. Mm. And I know Rami's on that team now, and Rami's awesome. But I don't think that team is... They just haven't fucking done anything. And it's sad to me. That's all. And Tony, Tony used to be on that G1 squad at KC. And if you watch the KC documentary for G1, Tony gets loud. And uh, I think that could really fuck with people on Fnatic. And again, Fnatic's pretty loud too, but Fnatic doesn't have Envor anymore, and Envor was their best player. So... You know it's what possible. I mean? It's possible. That's the way I look at it. Fnatic haven't done shit. And they don't have Envor anymore. No offense to Rami. Rami's great. It's just, I, they got to prove to me that they, that they deserve to be there. And That's they fair. haven't proved to me yet. That's fair. And with Forbidden Fruit, I think you have Envor, which was literally the best player on Fnatic. You have Tony, previously on G1. You have Hysteria, which is one of a really a veteran pro who's been around for a very, very, very long time. Used to be on the complexity roster. And then Arctic as well. It's like they I, I just feel that they're gonna be better than Fnatic in this event. I just do. I don't know how further they go, but like I said, I think it goes Optic G1 Forbidden Fruit Fnatic in that pool. Pool D, baby! Let's get it. All right. Pioneers G2 uh Lions and Space Station. This is the one that I feel can have the most variance because my problem with G2 is that they are a team who is consistently inconsistent. 
And again, they're another team that I feel hasn't done anything for me to prove my viewpoint differently. Okay. So I think pioneers take this pool pretty handily. If I'm going to be completely honest, um, does the shakeup with Nick, um, think benefit or keep them the same? I think it keeps them, them the down. same. I think it keeps them the same because Nick is also an aggressive type player. Yeah. Maybe not as aggressive as those that were as Manny, but like, I, I still think he fixed that play style. I, I think that fits that play style of KCP. If they're going to stick with their play style, Maddie says not to mention the very new edition of barcode. Has that been fucking confirmed yet? Like legitimately confirmed Maddie because yes, the writing's on the wall, but like, has it been tweeted by G2? Welcome barcode bitch. You know, the writing's on the wall. We, we see it there, obviously. Um, but yeah, you know what? Are you ready for this? I mean, he was scrimming with G2 two days ago. Oh, no. I, the writing's on the wall. We know. Yeah. Okay, you ready for this? Collect. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this might be the nicest I've ever been to Space Station Gaming. Legitimately the nicest I've ever been. Because guess Are what? I'm going to say Space Station takes second in the pool. You're moving them up. I'm going to take. I'm going to say Space Station takes second in the pool. I do. I don't think lions have skin in the game. I don't, I don't think they have skin in the game in this pool. Um, and I, and like Maddie said, I think G2 with the addition of barcode very quickly, I'm not saying it's going to be like a phase situation where there are three different teams coming together, but like you're, this is right before a tournament and space station have been around for a while longer. And yeah, I'm just going to say consistency wise team wise and with G2 being inconsistent consistently. Yeah. I'm going to say pioneers take the pool. Uh, space station gets second G2 third lines fourth. That's what I'll say. What do you think? I can just see that because don't know how well G2 is going to gel with barcode right away. Yep. Especially if they just started scrimming two days ago and they have a week till the super, right? Yeah. A lot of work's going to have to be put in. So it's possible. I'm just kind of at the wait and see stage now where I'm just, it's an online tournament too. Anything can happen. You know, that's another factor that oh, shouldn't be a factor, but it fucking is. Fucking sucks. That's my biggest thing because if, if we tweeted earlier, like my worry is that we've seen so many disconnects happen. Now, granted, it happens on, li- on land too. Like, don't get me wrong. And that sucks too. But like, I'm just worried, man. This is supposed to be the first test for these new rosters coming in to see where people kind of are at heading into Orlando. Um, but yeah, I'm just worried that people are going to be disconnecting left and right. I I'm worried about those ping issues that, that the support team is looking into. I'm just really, really worried about it because the, all I want to see is the best halo being played as possible, right? That's right. all we want. And it's those ping issues that lucid, uh, outlined were even in a custom game. It wasn't in matchmaking. So, so it very well could fucking happen. And it's sad because they're going to be playing on their own setups and they're going to be playing in custom lobbies. Like it's the same thing. Yep. So the Halo support team has, I mean, I'm not saying they have to, but obviously it'd be preferred to fix it as soon as possible within the week. But it's going to be, oh boy, it's going to be scary. Scary, scary, scary. But yeah, uh, Collect, you're just going to need to drop like 40 to 50 every game and then you're fine. (laughs) Don't worry about it. You're fine. Easily doable, right? No, and let me just... Let me just say this too, because I know, I, I, I know I feel like I'm taking a shit on that team all the time, but it's really, I just want, I just want everybody to play the best that they can. I want all teams fighting for that top spot. I want space station to be fighting for a first place spot, not just at this event, but also worlds as well. Like I, that I would love to see that. And 
until, until something happens, like I can't just change my mind and be like, Oh no, they're the best team in the tournament and not just space station, but you know, like a G2, like a fanatic, like this new phase, like a United, whatever it may be. It's just, I need to see something. He secretly just loves the merch. I do love the merch. That's not a secret. That's truth. That's absolute truth. But I also want to see every player doing the best that they possibly can to put their team in a spot to win. Otherwise, what the fuck's the point? I mean, collect, and this is a rhetorical question, but like as, as a professional player, I would assume that you want to win. Right? Plain and simple. I would assume as a professional Halo player that you would want to win. Whether it be one tournament, many tournaments, a world championship, you would want to win. Clex says whatever it takes, whatever it fucking takes, right? That's what I want for every single team. Obviously, Collect, I'd love to see you on main stage in a grand final game seven for that win, right? I want to see everybody there doing that. The amount of storylines that come out of that, like the amount that every team would learn from one another if that was the case. It's just unfortunate that a lot of the teams aren't there yet. A lot of the pro teams aren't there yet. And that's why I always say, that's why I've been consistently saying that, and it's not even joking, is that I I collect, we want what's best for you, obviously, as a player. And in my opinion, that would be off of that team and somewhere better. Or the other individuals that I mentioned off that team and build around you, like Will mentioned. And Maddie, like, that's the thing. Because it sucks when you have the best merch in the game and the team is just <laughs> not performing. They're, uh, I mean, they have success in, like, Rocket League and other. Yeah, the organization has success, for sure. Yeah. And they won, uh, they won a world championship in Siege. We talk about that consistently. Yep. So. All right. But yeah, Space Station, legitimately, I have taken second in that pool. Market boys, your prize pool breakdown for the super uh, first place will take on forty five thousand dollars. Second, twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Third, fourteen thousand dollars. Fourth, seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Fifth through sixth will take on three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Seventh through eighth will take home twenty five hundred dollars a piece. Ninth through twelfth, two thousand dollars a piece. Thirteenth through sixteenth will take home fifteen hundred dollars a piece. And seventeenth through twentieth will take home one thousand dollars a piece. So yes, even if you lose outright, you'll still take home a grand for your team. And that means it's a total prize breakdown of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Should be a good time. Yeah, looking forward to it. Obviously, wish it was on land, but you know. Here we are. That's why everybody moved to Texas. At this point, it feels like we could just have a land in Texas. That was the joke. It was like, why don't we just do that? Yeah, just everyone meet up. Yep. <laughs> just meet up at somebody's house. Yeah. Like, we're doing a land, guys. Um. Oh, we dropped we dropped some frames for a second there. Well, we'll see if that continues. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's it for our topics of the week. Let's get into some regular news introducing halo gear rewards i'm not gonna read through the entire article even though i put it in here you can go ahead and do that in the google doc of the show notes of the show exclamation point show notes in chat if you're watching live or check out the link in the description audio or video whatever you prefer um but instead i'll just say this it's like bungee rewards but for halo for those who don't know what that is you complete in-game accomplishments, you can then buy exclusive merch tied to said accomplishments. The first one being a um, a jacket for the Fracture Entrenched event. So if you complete the Fracture, the Fracture Entrenched event pass, all 30 tiers of the pass, then you can purchase this tanker jacket which I believe is like 125 after the coupon. You are correct. So 125 USD after the coupon. And if you have already completed it, then you'll receive a code in your waypoint notifications. So there you go. 
I have yet to receive my code. Interesting. Yeah. Did you receive yours right away? Yeah, first day. Yeah. I've yet to receive mine. So maybe I'll submit a Halo support ticket, which is a fucking nuisance to do. But maybe I should do that. But yeah. And then Justin, our one and only Justin LaFleche, uh, who he says got to bounce. But hey, you have a great night as well. I know you're probably gone already, but this is what he said. So if I haven't completed a single level of the pass uh, yet, will I still have time from this tweet going live to the event being over to finish by tears? And Halo Gear said, there are three more weeks left in the pass, and you're correct. You can earn 10 tiers per week. So if you haven't started yet, it's still possible to complete. So there you go. There will be three weeks left. And it makes sense because this is an elongated season. Yeah. So yeah, makes sense. And that's it for the regular news. God of the games, watch! The CDL champs bracket is here. And yes, the Minnesota Rocker are not in it. Which sucks, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? Um, Will, we're not going to go through the whole bracket, but I just want your first predictions here. Phase subliners. Phase. Uh, Raven Surge. Surge? I agree. Uh, Optic Ultra. Ultra. Wow. Ooh. I think they come out slow for some reason. I don't I don't, I don't think you're wrong necessarily because we know the inconsistencies of optic, but I'll be I'll be the fanboy here. I'll say optic. Okay. Fuck it. And then Thieves Breach. Breach. Wow. I want some upsets. Okay. Uh, I just want some upsets. Okay, because I'm going thieves on that. You're probably right, but no, I mean you never know. Team could come out slow. Teams could come out hot. You have no idea what happens. Wow, that's gonna be fun. I just this want, that's be fun. Fun. I want more shit to go down. All right. I I don't blame you. Tired of the same thing over and over again. Nah, I hear you. I mean, for what it's worth, we have yet to have back to back champions in a major. It's been a different different winner each major, and there have been four so far, and this and, and we're leading in a chance. Like, so. Ultra, didn't they They made a loser's run? Was that Ultra? No, that was Gorillas. Oh, Gorillas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen some crazy shit happen. So anything can happen. It feels like anything can happen, yeah. Yep, anything can happen. That's it for Count of the Games Watch. It's time for oh, Wheels yeah. Wheels Adventures with an Aloverse. Another game, too. Will didn't fill out his shit on the show. Oh, I did. I didn't fill out my. Oh, I didn't. It's okay. What'd you play? What games did I play? Off of memory, what did you play? Well, we played some Apex Legends. We did. Yeah. We did. I'll let you talk about it when we get there. But uh, <laughs> also played some Halo Infinite. Nice. For the community play date. Yep. I think that was it. That's the first time I really haven't played Infinite other than the play date. Wow. Um what else did I play? I played well, Rock you completed Band. you completed the uh the ten tier pass too. I did. I did do that before. And you had the the double yep. tier thing, yep. right? Yep, you get two tiers for every challenge. So I only had to play like a few games of Last Barton Standing, and that's probably why I wanted to block that from my memory. Hell yeah. <laughs> um Agreed. Even though I won one of them. With, uh, anyway. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Saturday night, played Rock Band with some friends. Nice. That's about it. What about you, Josh? Uh, I also played some Apex Legends with you, and we got a dub. Um, that was exhilarating and exciting, and yeah. uh, we fucked them up at the end. Yeah. At the end specifically. And then uh, we almost got a dub. We were in prime position to get one. But this dumb fuck, I mean, you can't say dumb because they outplayed us, but like this team, this duo just completely went under our radar. Literally were under us coming up that tower. Yes. And then we were just caught out. It just, it just sucked the, the way the circle was closing and the positioning that a team had like a good snipe spot Yeah, with good coverage. So we were kind of pinned down. They could see us and you went, you went to go get a shield battery in a pill and then literally as you were starting to come back, the other the duo was right there, just beamed us. Yep. I just yep. wasn't expecting them to be there right away. Because we heard them. We heard them underneath. Like we're we're preparing for them to make a move. Yeah. You it just it was surprising they made the move when they did, considering yeah. the team sniping was where they were. Yes. Like the better play would have been to wait until movement happened. Yep. Because then honestly, the team that was sniping, we got they they fought us. The, uh, the sniping team third party and I laughed, but I'm assuming the sniping team won that fight considering I broke shields on one. 
got damage into another and the the other team was just sniping across uh, across the way clear view on them yep. like i would assume so too yeah anyway um yeah apex legends is a ton of fun and i've heard that they've got some big changes coming in the next update so yes they're buffing the e- eva 8 again so, oh new uh, meta or yeah. same meta just more S- powerful same meta yeah jesus um i played some destiny 2 and I just have a fun time with that. And then played some Halo Infinite for the community play date. And we played a wacky fucking hammer game type at the end, oh God. which was shit. Uh, uh, never again. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but it was something. So there's that. Yeah, so I played. Put us on a map like Aquarius where you can't fall off. That's actually a, not a bad idea at all. And maybe like just let the gravity not be so low so you can like I'll jump. make it so you float. You just you super fast and you float across. Give us hammer and swords. Yeah. All right. Isn't that a game type in five or something? I think like an action sack. Probably. Whatever. It's time for some shout outs. (laughs) Fucking get right in there. Uh, Shout out to everyone who joined in the community played it. It was pancakes, hero, Spartan, Marmar and shot. Thank you guys so very much for joining. Hope you had fun. I know Mar had fun in that dumbass mode that we played at the end, but whatever uh shout out to everyone who followed and sub during the live show that includes uh peanut mutt with the follow thank you so much quake murphy with the sub um katana with the f- uh three month resub thank you so very much you both get woos and then um we have rob struct joey slice br briggs and crslk thank you all so very much for the follows greatly appreciated thank you for hanging out um, happy belated birthday to Monza and then happy birthday today to pre devinator and Martin Ohms as well. Voodoo man himself. Happy birthday to you gents and happy belated to Monza. Hope you all had great birthdays. Community creations, halo memes every day, reddit.com forward slash R forward slash halo memes. Go check those out. Yes. That sub Reddit is still popping. It's popping. It's popping. Uh, taking an indefinite break from Halo and YouTube by Halo Cannon. Um, it's a somber video, but Ian, completely understand and uh, wishing you the best in the future. It was a pleasure to meet you at Outpost and uh, loved what you've always done for the community. Um, there's a Halo montage trailer by Sways. And then we have three HCS documentaries from three different organizations. We have the dominating EU halo ascend HCS Valencia documentary by ascend. We have eclipse episode three fight or flight the HCS Kansas city documentary by E United and the villains ascension HCS Kansas city by G one. Go check those videos out. You know what I will say? I fucking miss. Hmm. And this is genuinely truthful like i miss um the space stations documentaries as well i do i will forever shit on elamite's response about the whole it doesn't matter how i perform as long as we perform well worlds take i will forever that lives rent free in my head um but no i that that content was awesome and i this is sounds stupid but they're their first documentary that they did, I thought their their intro that they had was phenomenal. Hmm. Like just, yeah, how that intro was shot is phenomenal. Like E United's is good too, but like that, so good. Um, Rob says you're welcome. Rob stuck to my gamer tag too. Call back to the map construct. Hell, the best map, one of the best maps ever. Am I right, Rob? Am I right though? Construct is phenomenal. A lot of pros like to shit on that map. They're wrong, in my opinion. <laughs> They're just fucking wrong. That map's phenomenal. Can't it's got comment. the it's got the verticality. It's got the openness, but it's also a little closed off. You have multiple points of entry, multiple ways to be sneaky, great weapon positioning. I fucking love that map. Oh my god. And it Rob, uh, Beth, high tech redneck. She gets it too. Loves that map as well. That's it for the community creation. So that's all I got for the show. I, this might be TMI, but I don't give a fuck. This is going to be, I need to take a fucking piss. So will <laughs> without further ado, would you mind plugging the show? Of course you can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HGS pro talk. 
We are on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and Spotify, and others as well. Like Pocket Cast. Leave us a review and let others know about the show. Join the Discord. Join the community to discussion. Link is provided in the Google Google Doc of the show notes of the show. I'm stumbling now. Uh, but Or exclamation point Discord and chat. Or check out our link tree on our Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook for your social media sites. Go check us out there. If you want to check out VODs, check out HGS Pro. Don't check. Well, you can check out HGS Pro.com, but check out HGS Pro Talk on YouTube where we post more VODs. I also Jesus did a little Christ. like channel intro thing. My mind is like crossing and blurring everything right now. It's okay. Today was a day. Today was a day. Yeah. So yeah, check out hsprep.com, link to our merch in the top right corner. And then, what I forget? Twitch! We're live on Twitch, people! We're here! If you didn't know, now you have no. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> shout out, why not? Yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, Twitch.tv slash hsprotalk. Check us out live every Monday at 7 p.m. Central or 7.30 if we decide to eat dinner a little late. Um, and then... And tonight. Don't forget the fine folks over at Podcast Evolved. Make sure to check out EvolvedHalo.com. Your, Your home, home for Halo. For Halo? For Halo. For Halo. They have shows titled Podcast Evolved Mission Debrief. I almost said Podcast Debrief, and I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> Halo TV Plus Book Club builds with blocks and Halo headlines. And Halo oh, gear. And Halo gear. Wait, what is it? Um, Shit. I forgot. No. Mm. EvolvedHalo.com, your home for Halo. It's like gear. Is it gear? It is Halo Gear Guide. Gear Guide. Halo Gear Guide. Go HGG. Check like HGTV, but HGG. Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And then we have our own little uh, spot over there, too. So if you want to scoot on over to EvolvedHalo.com, it would be appreciated. Get on. Scoot over there. Scoot, scoot. Josh, that's all I got. You want to... Close her down. Close her out. Close, close her down? All right. We'll fucking Closing turn the lights off. Closing time. I fucking hate that song. What? Yeah. I'm like the only person in the world that does not like that song at all. Will's taking off the headset. He is bouncing, ladies and gentlemen. You can, uh, because Closing Time is a bad song. You can have this song. We're going to end you can, the show. You can figure this out. We're going to end the show with this. Spartan tweeted out, so tired, can't wait to go to sleep tonight. No stream until around August 10th as I leave for Texas tomorrow. Can't play a big online tournament unless you're Texas, of course. Of course. Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for episode 246 of HCS Pro Talk. If you're tuning in live, thank you so much for hanging out with us and joining the conversations. It was great. Happy to have you here. Um, if you're checking out the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast service or the uh, VOD over on Twitch and or YouTube, thank you very much for taking the time to watch and or listen to the show. Um, again, I sound like a broken record, but I truly mean it. Thank you so very much for taking the time to do it. It means an absolute shit ton that you take the time out of your day, week, month, whatever it may be to listen or watch. Um, consume it how you will. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk about the results of the HCS North American Super. It's going to be a hoot. Can't wait to see all the competition that shows up. And hopefully, hopefully the disconnects are at a minimum to none at all. And, as, and I also included in the tweet, may the ping be ever in your favor. We'll be back next week. But until then.